Great. Thank you for the heads up. Yeah, just, <laughs> just a little FYI. Um, <laughs> Okay, good. Well, welcome everybody uh, to really, I guess, officially our first uh, kind of teaching session. Um, you guys were tasked uh, with going through at least the first uh, portion, uh, you know, vision, you know, sort of personal vision assignment, you know, mission assignment, interviewing business person strategy. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go through uh, each one of these, uh, and then we're just going to have some dialogue around it because the, the purpose of it is, is to make this engaging. I don't want to make this a monologue. I want it to be a dialogue uh, because part of this really is you guys starting to, to gentrify this, really understand it. And again, the goal is to taste and see, see if it's something that starts to resonate with you. And you're going through your own journey right, to identify what it is that makes sense for you as you're trying to grow into your career, uh, ultimately, as you come out of school, because we obviously want to learn at school, but ultimately, you're trying to say, well, who am I? And how does this really resonate with me? And so this is a bit of understanding of who we are, you know, our identity is a firm. Um, and so um, I guess just to start off, you know, did everybody have a chance to go through the history of Integrity Capital at all? Yeah, was that that was the first portion, right? Yep, correct. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed that. Yeah, so tell me your thought. I just want to hear from you guys. What were your thoughts? Anything stand out to you? Anything that um, resonated you with you guys at all? I like the goal of uh, giving away a million dollars uh, towards the end. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I thought it was really neat to hear your story too and how it all started and the ups and downs and the path you went through. Yeah. Yeah. There was lots of ups and downs. Yeah. I yeah. think there's a lot of beauty in like the humility that you shared with us, like with, you know, I think it's not just you and, and not just us, like simple people, but a lot of businesses I think have are vulnerable to those, um, the trap of you know being prideful and thinking that you're gonna get there on your own but i really appreciated you sharing that you know you had some downs and you learned from it and you realized you know what actually got you to the success yeah thanks yeah and uh my thoughts are pretty similar you know uh you mentioned both your ups and your downs and uh you definitely experienced downs but it has only made you better up to this point uh so you definitely have learned from your mistakes which is awesome yeah, there's, uh, there's lots of uh, stories behind the gray hair. So it's, uh, you know, when you, when, you, when you start going through those things, you start to find out what, uh, you know, that's part, part of the journey, you know, when you go through these difficult trials is that you can really start to say, okay, who am I, you know? And because uh, everybody says, well, this is what I believe and this is how I would function, but you really don't know that until you go through it. Right. It's just it's 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 very difficult when you go through the difficult times, you start to find out where the fractures are in your in your lifestyle and your real belief. Right. I mean, you could say you believe certain things, but when you get down to those moments, you find out your character or sometimes the lack thereof, which I found out I didn't have a lot of it <laughs> for a long time. Uh, and so it took a lot of blunderings for me to finally go, OK, what, what why am I operating this way? And, and what is it that I need to do to change, um, you know, so that I can have a different experience and outcome uh, as we move forward uh, as a firm. So, yeah, so I, I think it was really important for you guys to, to, to experience that because it really is part of why we are where we are today um, is because of the experiences that um, we go through in our past. Assuming uh, one of the things that we talk about here at our firm is successful failure and the reason why we call it that is because if you really take the failures you have and you can go back and learn from them, then it can become a real success uh, because that's just the opportunities. I always tell my kids, they said, it's not losing, it's learning, right? If you take the time to really walk through the process of the journey. So good. Well, I'm, I'm glad you guys were able to go through that. And I want to say for those that have done it, thank you for sharing your story with me. Uh, as much as that wasn't mandatory, uh, I, I appreciated it. I, I really enjoy hearing your journey because you guys have your own story to tell and it makes you who you are. Um, and so I think that's really important uh, to be vulnerable and share that. 
uh, with other people. Why do you think it's important to share that with other people? I mean, to the extent that it's appropriate, what do you, what do you guys think? Why does that, why does that matter? Yeah, I'll go ahead and go. Um, you know, in a workplace, in a, in a team environment, you're obviously working with people every single day. So I think that it is important to understand what makes every individual tick. What's their why? Why do they do what they do? So uh, if we can understand what you've been through and hopefully you can understand what we've been through after our stories, you know, I think that it'll just um, help us have a better team environment and truly understand each other and eventually work, work better together, excuse me. Uh, that's what I think at least. Yeah, no, I like that. So just learning about each other so that you can understand where each other's coming from um, and that's the way I would describe that in my own life is the more I understand about you, the more I can humanize you, right? The more I don't, then I can easily dehumanize you and start painting a picture that may not be accurate, right? And then I start judging you and treating you the way that I probably shouldn't, right? So you get to understand people more and have a little bit more empathy, sympathy, and understanding about why it is that they are the way they are. So that's really good. What else? Any other thoughts about why it might be important to, to share some of your vulnerabilities, share some of the things you do well, and maybe some of the things that you don't do so well. Well, it, I think recognizing your own weaknesses is a big part of how you grow as a person. It's how you develop new skills and uh, just start to be better at your job, be better with your relationships. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, absolutely. I like that. I think it also creates a comfort and a community in the workplace, you know, and kind of brings it out of just you know, that job aspect of it, but more of a community, more of a just friendship sort of thing. Yeah, there's this idea that when I'm vulnerable, um, and if I'm in a healthy uh, environment to being vulnerable, then there's a place of where somebody kind of goes, oh, me too, right? Like I've struggled with that. And I have a difficult time with that too. And then all of a sudden, you start to feel like, oh, gosh, I'm not alone. Uh, in my struggles and my trials that I'm going through and somebody else understands me, therefore I feel more connected and I have the capacity to be much more productive uh, because of this thing called vulnerability. That's really good. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Like in a professional setting, you have to work with people almost all the time. Like there's no way to get around it, you know, having to have teamwork and just the, the skill set of working with people. And if you don't know what is behind that person, um, it makes things really hard and actually affects the success of the company because you can't work together or learn how to communicate properly and understand how that person like listens and communicates. It, it can be really difficult to progress further in a company. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, because what and I think what you're hitting on what we're going to be talking a lot about as we go through this is building a foundation of trust. Uh, and in a work environment, one of the key ways of building a foundation of trust is actually being vulnerable. Uh, because now what happens is you start to really understand the dynamic of people's strengths and their weaknesses and the things that you get to learn to grow together about. And if you don't have trust, then you start to build a culture of what we call hide and blame, where people start to kind of hide because they don't want to be vulnerable because it's not okay. And then they start to blame so that they can get into preservation mode. And so you start to protect the ego as opposed to worrying about what we call the collective ego. So it's good, good, good comments. I like uh, what I'm hearing so far. What, what about the vision uh, video? We talked about, you know, the vision. Do you guys remember what the distinction between like a vision is versus like a, a mission? Can anybody, does anybody want to share what they remember about some of the distinctions uh, between a vision versus a mission? Um, the vision is like kind of like the end goal and what we're trying to get to and what we hope to achieve. And then the mission is like the strategy and how we're going to get there. Yeah, absolutely, Kilana. So yeah, think about like the, um, um, you know, this idea that, you know, vision is like this picture of the end. It's where our destination is, right? We're heading to this destination. Uh, and it's, a, it's, we're trying to paint a picture of that destination, right? Because you kind of have vision 
then you have mission, which is strategy, which is kind of the tactical ways you might get there, which can inhibit objectives or goals or things that you're going to do. But the vision is really, really important because it has to be something that inspires you, that excites you, that maybe invokes some passion. Um, so it's a little bit different than a goal because what we're trying to do is inhibit a picture of a future reality that we would like to create. Um, and so when you guys heard about some of the vision things, was there anything that stuck out to you or you had questions about or, or uh, anything just about vision you'd like to, to comment on? Um, I really liked how there was a um, portion on just having each person has their own role and has a part that they play because I think that, you know, a lot of times we're like, oh, we all need to be on the same page, on the same level. I mean, on the same page, absolutely, but um, on the same level doing the exact same things, but everyone has kind of like a different part that they play in a team. And I think talking about that and making it clear kind of um, helps like foster a good culture. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, so you have this unified destination with a lot of different people that are sort of having different roles, having a different uh, way in which they function that collectively comes together to get to an end unit. So that's awesome. It's a big, big deal. What else? Any other thoughts about the vision that uh, you had questions about or struck you or something that maybe you, you wanted to know more about? I just noticed a pattern of like, just from the different visions that I had looked at, um, the, a theme that people had was caring about other people. Like a lot of them would always include like benefiting others in this way or something, you know what I mean? Like the happiness of others or something. And it always involved other people. And I think mm -hmm. the reason for that is because, I mean, people are the backbone of these, you know, corporations, like without other people's money we can't function as you know where are we going to get capital without other people and you know what i mean and so no matter who you are whether you're a car man manufacturer or a bank or whatever you just you need people to um to thrive and so i think it's very um important that your vision shows that yeah there's yeah that's a good point that you know there's this idea that you have to invoke the humanity of your vision right there's that it involves people it involves relationship it involves experience uh, because we are experiential people right we want we uh, have ups and downs we want to be entertained we want to laugh we want to cry so all these different things come together to make us so that we have desires um, and we also have a desire for justice, right? We want things to be right that are wronged. So, you know, that's very much should be a part of a vision uh, for sure is something that you want to have as better in the future, right? Like you just, you want, nobody wants to like create a worse future, at least I hope not, but you're always trying to say, how do we create that better future for tomorrow? And it gives us hope uh, at the end of the day. And that's really part of what a vision should do for you guys, as you went through, if you did go through that assignment, is I want to challenge you guys to really think about like, what is it that I want to have in my future and my vision that would excite me? Because if you're writing a vision down and you're not excited or pumped up or, you know, somehow just overwhelmed how cool that would be, then it's probably not the right one. Okay. And, I, and when I say doing vision, part of vision takes time doesn't just happen out of a box. You don't just pop a goal out and you're done. It takes time. You have to think through it, go through life experience, and that can sort of morph over time um, to where vision becomes more and more clear based upon a problem that you see that needs to be dealt with uh, in the future. Um, so I hope as you go through this in your own personal vision assignment that you really think through those things uh, so that you can have a vision that excites you. Uh, at the end of the day. So I know for me, this has taken me years to really start to see the patterns that take place uh, within this industry. Some of the things that are frustrations uh, that we constantly run into and to say, okay, could we create a better future where those things don't take place? Um, and that takes some courage uh, to think through those things. And it takes some time 
uh, to really know uh, where it is you're headed. So that's good. Anything else on the uh, the vision stuff? Did you guys, um, do you guys, like at this point in your journey within college, do you feel like you sort of are, it's still fuzzy for you uh, as to kind of your own personal vision or I'd like to hear from some of you guys, like, what do you, what do you think? I know for me, uh, you know, um, I obviously have core values that I've lived by for my entire life. And uh, I know what my end goal wants to be. I think just really honing that in and uh, really finding the specifics of my vision, you know, uh, just like you said, you know, it, experiencing uh, different things. So you can really, um, I'm trying to gather my thoughts, but uh, really just to hone in on it and uh, just refine it, if you will. Yeah. Um, if, if that makes any sense. I don't know. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, as much as you might have some core values on things, but trying to, you know, figure out like, what is it exactly that my uniqueness is or my skill set or the thing that really moves me and then how do I put that into focus um, and as, as to where I'm headed? What about some of the other guys? Like what, what has been your experience going through college and, you know, some of the own frustrations or things as you're trying to get clarity around what it is that you want to do or where you're headed? Um, I totally agree that it's definitely hard to refine everything and just be ready to go into one specific path, especially especially with being so young and not really knowing everything about every different area that you could study in. And I know I've changed one of my majors and I came into college wanting to do um, something similar, but not really where I'm at right now. And having so many different people around you that are like, oh yeah, well, I'm studying this and I'm doing this and I think I'm gonna go do this. It's like, there's so many options that you almost feel like you don't get the chance to explore. Um, so just trying to find something that you're for sure, like, I'll be happy doing this forever. It's really hard to make a decision that feels like it lasts a lifetime in four years. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, that makes total sense. What about some of the other guys? What about you, Evan? What's been your journey like trying to figure out what, what it is that you want to do? Um, college is really cool <clears throat> because it puts in you in a lot of uncomfortable situations and you kind of have to work on being comfortable in those uncomfortable situations. Mm -hmm. um, and so over the last three years in college, I've kind of figured out that the better you are at being comfortable in brand new situations, uh, the easier it is for you to figure those situations out um, and the better you're going to go through life. So that's kind of the direction I'm headed at the moment. Right. It's good. It's a good place to be. Yeah, just learning that it's okay to be uncomfortable. What else? I want to hear from from all you guys. What's been your journey like, uh, EJ? Yeah, well, I think I'm at the point where it's really hard for me to like refine into my vision something specific because I feel like with all these new experiences and college and relationships, my vision is like expanding mm. rather than coming together. But I don't think at the same time, I don't think that's a bad thing at all. No. You know, I think it's, uh, I don't know, college has really opened my eyes. And, you know, I don't have a direct path, but I have a lot of different things I'm interested in, you know. And I think that's what's been so great about college for me. And, yeah, no, I love that assignment about the vision because, you know, I've, I've always had goals and I've known how to get there, some of them, or what at least I want to get to but never a full specific, like specific vision. So that pushed my boundaries for sure. It's good. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. It's something I thought of. Um, I noticed like, I've heard people talk about this kind of analogy, but whenever I'm, um, whether it's like just, I don't know, walking or driving or even drawing, like if you start, if you're looking where you want to go when you're drawing like a circle or something, or whatever it is, like, you always have to look where you want to go. And otherwise, like, if you don't, like, you just start, like, drifting if you're not looking at the path you want to go. And so I, I think that's how it is with vision. Like, you will end up someplace you don't want to be if you don't have that vision set in place. Like, I know where I want to go. Um, you don't need to know exactly what it's going to look like, but you just need to know where you want to go and know the direction you're headed in and keep your um, sights set on that. That's why they call it a vision, because you need to be looking there. And so... 
um, for me, like I really uh, resonated with what Kilana said, um, just about like having so many options and it is really difficult to pick a way to go. But if you just at least hone in on the most important, like actual vision of maybe I don't know if I want to study this specific aspect of finance or this one, but I know that I want to help people always. I always want to be able to do something that will benefit other people. Mm. So that's a vision I can have my sights set on mm. always. Yeah, I like that. So yeah, when you when you think about vision, it might not be a sharpshooter at the moment, right? But you have this broad, at least conceptual idea of what it is that you do want. Mm-hmm. So how how do you how do you guys think that you get to the place where you can start to hone in? on what that vision starts to look like? What elements and things do you think are important to help design and develop what is a vision? Like what what are some of the, you know, if I'm using an analogy, uh, if I'm stealing from Macy for a minute to use analogies, then what what would it go into this, um, you know, mixture bag to create, you know, an ultimate cake at the end of it? What elements do you need to have? in order to start honing in a vision? What do you guys think? I think that's what I'm saying. Sorry, uh, I were you about to go? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, it's all human. Okay, yeah, um, I was just gonna say that um, you have to have a purpose. Why do you do what you do? Um, I think purpose and vision go hand in hand. Um, obviously you have to have a vision like everybody was saying, where you want to go, uh, but why, why do you want to go there? You know, like, what is your reasoning for doing this? You know, that's what I think. I think that's a pretty important aspect of yeah. um, a vision. Yeah. Yeah. I remember a, a young guy uh, reached out to me and he said, I want to sit down with you and uh, learn about the industry. And I sat down with him for lunch and he said, I said, well, tell me why you want to do this. And he goes, I want to be rich. I said, okay. <laughs> I said, I understand that. I said, but why? And he kind of looked at me and he goes, I want to be rich. (laughs) I "I understand that. I said, I I didn't ask you that. I said, why do you want to be rich? And uh, he just kind of, you know, wrapped up lunch real fast and wanted to get out of there. He didn't like my questions. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Um, But the, you know, I think it's important for us to go back to the question, why? You know, why, why does it matter, you know, to us? So that brings me to that question upon that is to say, okay, so if we need to know the reasons why, then what are the things that are important in our experience to help form that final vision? What do you think are some of the things in your life experience that starts to help form vision for you? What do you guys think? I think it's um, a lot of experience that kind of build a moral compass in a way. Mm -hmm. And uh, following that moral compass and those come through experience, it's uh, discipline, staying true to who you are and what you want. Yeah. I mean, that's what I would say. Yeah. Yeah. So like if you, you know, think about the past, you know, you start to go through different experiences and through those different experiences, might I add, they could be positive or negative, right? Um, You could have had a really bad experience uh, that helps form your future vision. Does that make sense? So you could have something that happened to you in the past that you go, I never want to have anybody experience what I experienced again. um, And I will never have that as part of my life, right? I have a, a good friend of mine who lived in deep poverty you know, when he was a kid and he said, I'm, I never, ever want my family to experience that kind of poverty again. Right. So it was a real bad experience from his perspective, but because he used that not as an excuse, but as an opportunity to start to form a future vision, um, that was part of the fuel that launched him into his future vision. So, yeah, so you've got to have kind of a why, you know, why does it even matter? right? To get some, some core into that, you've got to understand maybe your values. I mean, you know, have you guys ever sat down and actually like 
written down what are your values. You know, have you guys ever done that before? So I, I would challenge you guys to really think about like, what, what is my value system? Like, what do I stand for and why do I stand for that? And why does that even matter? And it's really a big deal because then it starts to help you form a future vision. And what else do you think it helps you do? It helps you make decisions at the end of the day. What I heard from you guys a lot was there are so many things to make decisions about. And my response to you is yes and amen. There are a lot of things. I mean, I go to Cheesecake Factory and I freak out. You know, you open up the, the menu and it's like there's 3,000 things you can move from. I'm like, man, it's going to take me three days to pick something to eat. Uh, you know, and then you go to In-N-Out Burger and it's like, okay, cool. I got three things on the menu. Thank you. That's all I wanted. <laughs> I don't want 60,000, right? So there's a lot of choices out there to make, a lot of decisions. So when you start to sit down and really think through and develop your values, that helps you make decisions. And one of the things that you guys want to be able to start doing is to be able to have enough decision makers so you can say no uh, as fast as you can, right? How many of you guys sometimes struggle with saying no, right? Yeah. Time. No. I actually have a personal goal right now to, I'm like, think before I say yes. I, I have to tell myself to right. pause yeah. before I say yes to someone because I keep yeah. saying yes too right. many times. It is. It's super hard, right? Because we're like, well, I don't know. So it's really hard to say no uh, to things. But when you start to really gentrify and solidify your value system, you know, why am I doing what I'm doing and really get clear, then what happens is then you can start to walk in and go, okay, you know what, these are definitely the things I don't want to do. And this is not the person that I want to be. And so if that is the case, then I can start to say no, and it helps me make decisions, okay? Because otherwise you just kind of say yes to everything because you don't know. So a, a, a functional life and a life that's worth living is a reflective life, okay? It's where you take time to think through things and not just act, okay? What do you guys think I mean by that? Not everybody jump at once. <laughs> um, you know, so I'm trying to get you guys to talk more than me. <laughs> um, I think that it's kind of like making sure that we're not like too impulsive. Like it's easy to just be like, okay, let's like jump at everything and do everything. But um, when you have an end goal, like we're talking about vision right now, when you have an end goal and something that you're working towards, you can kind of look at, okay, well, is this going to be the best decision to get me where I'm trying to go and do what I actually want to do? And you never know, like one decision can change everything. So every decision is really important. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So decisions matter, uh, as you're going to learn about later, is you can't manage time, you can only manage priorities. You've heard time management. I don't buy into that concept because time passes by. I can't manage it. It just goes bye-bye but you can manage your priorities, right? So the way you manage your priorities is by actually slowing down, taking the time to intentionally think through and say, okay, what do I believe? What do I not believe? Why do I believe it? And so that takes time. Then it actually takes you intentionally stopping, pulling back and thinking through these things with some intention. And it's one of the hardest things you can do. Benjamin Franklin said that. He said, one of the most difficult things you'll ever do is to think, okay? Not work, not go do physical labor, but to think, to stop, slow down and think, okay? So it's hard because you have to listen to your thoughts. <laughs> and sometimes you'd rather be busy and not do that, right? I know I would. So that's one of the things that's really important when it comes to vision is you have to slow down and think and say, why does that matter to me? And as you do that, you'll get more clarity and you'll get more peace of mind because you really start to hone in on like, okay, that's the type of person I want to be. Not do I want to do, but the type of person I want to be. And that starts to make things come into more focus.
Okay. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay. So, so my challenge to you guys, it's not an assignment, but it is a challenge, whether you're here or not, is to think about that, um, to write that down and put it to paper. Because when you put something to paper, when you take your physical hand and put a pen on it and press it to paper, the studies show over and over that your mind starts to gentrify things, becomes more real, it starts to form differently. Um, and so I would challenge you guys to do that. I journal every night. I take about 10 minutes and I just kind of ask questions. What did I learn that was new? What lessons did I learn today? Where did I maybe fail? And what can I learn from that? And uh, what is a new way I can think, right? So just take some time to reflect and slow down. And that is, and by the way, that is, I would say that is the most number one thing that is, has been revolutionary for me and impactful. 10 minutes uh, to stop and slow down and to learn so you can make different decisions, okay? Okay, so mission uh, matters, right? So if I have a clear vision and I'm like, well, I wanna go here, right? This is the end game. Then why do you think a mission matters and why does strategy matter or tactics or steps? What do you think? I think a mission is how you turn your vision from being like, oh, well, one day that'll happen or like someday or anything like that to, okay, well, this is my goal and I'm going to get there by this date or this is when I'm going to have it done. And if you just aimlessly are like, yeah, well, I mean, this is the idea that I'm going for. It's great to have an idea and it's great to have a place that you're working towards. But whenever you have something that's helping you get there and guiding you and um, you're really thinking about it, constantly as you're working towards that goal, you're gonna get there a lot faster and maybe struggle a little bit less on the way. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. You know, one of the things I've heard in the past to that point, Kilana, is that, you know, vision without mission is just pipe dream. You know, it's just sort of a dream that you have that really has no teeth to it, has no legs to it, because it's just conceptually an idea and it doesn't have anything moving towards that ultimate end. And so mission really matters so that you have steps, things you're gonna do, actions you have to take to make that a reality. That's really good. What else? What other things? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll use a football analogy. So in every football game, um, a team's vision is to win that game. Mm -hmm. And um, their mission in that game is like a playbook. Um, they're not just gonna go out on the field and they're not just gonna go out there and hope for the best and uh, run random plays, you know, they're going to study their opponent. They're going to study their past years, past games, and really come up with a step-by-step -step playbook of how they're going to win the game, or in this case, accomplish their vision. Um, that's the first thing that pops up in my head. I love it. Yeah. I resonate with that big time. You're hundred percent right. You go out, get on the field and uh, your coach doesn't come up to you and say, okay, we're going to wing it today. So good luck. Have fun. I'll be over here on the sideline if you need me, right? There's intention to it, thought, looking at film. Uh, there's so much that goes into preparing for a football game because you want to win, right? And if you want to win, you got to be prepared and then you got to go out and actually make it happen, you know? And so, and it's hard because what you have to start anticipating along the ways are the obstacles that could get in the way. So what do you guys think some of the obstacles that could get in the way for your own personal goals or visions? What do you think, what do you think those things could be? Um, I think something I've been thinking about is the uh, beauty and also like how difficult it is to deal with failure. Um, those things just, they come and failure is always going to be there. And there's a lot of stuff that will, kind of maybe tear our hopes out and it seems like we want to stop moving forward and it can be really discouraging um but in those specific moments we can completely like just go the wrong direction and just say i'm done with this and throw in the towel and that that means our fail like what everything we've worked for is just kind of for naught like there's nothing you know we just stopped um looking at our vision and gave up but if we use that time of failure to really look and analyze the situation, be like, 
why did we fail? How can we like move past this? That's where the growth really is, is in that spot of failure. And so we can like get over that hurdle and move forward. And it's not like we have to start all over. We just, we just pick up where we left off and we fix that, that issue right then and there and we keep moving forward. So I love that. Yeah. That's really where things go from black and white to technicolor is when you say, okay, you know what? I failed. I even have some regret about that, but how do I make this a gift? <clears throat> what is it I can do to go back, take a look at what happened? And I think if I heard you correctly, that even starting to look at the belief system, you know, what, what prevented me? Why do I keep maybe sabotaging or why do I not do that and start to understand what I call in my own life head trash, right? What is it that I keep saying that keeps preventing me from moving forward to the ultimate end of my vision or the objective of my life. So reflection uh, of the failure is huge. It's a, it's, it's a dynamo thing that you need to do in order to be able to move towards the end is to reflect why that didn't work out. And I would say most people don't do that, but it is one of the most powerful things for sure. So that is an obstacle, uh, absolutely. What else, what other thoughts? about this idea of mission or what, what do you guys think about mission in terms of going and getting these steps or obstacles that get in the way uh, when you're trying to get to the end goal? Um, kind of building on what Macy was saying, I think your biggest obstacle is always going to be yourself. And it's always going to be, you know, the decisions that you make along the way and doubting yourself or just Really, I, if I look at anything that I've failed at before, it was me honestly just being lazy or me um, not thinking that I could do it or not wanting to try just to avoid failure. Like the, those obstacles are the hardest obstacles because you can blame everything on anyone else, but whenever it comes down to it, like if it's you that's keeping yourself from doing something, there's nothing that can change it until you accept that and yeah. learn from it and grow from it. That's huge. Yeah, just being able to, accept personal responsibility, which is a sign of maturity. When you say, you know what, I take responsibility uh, for that. And I can't, you know, I'm not going to go on a blame spree. And uh, what is it that I can learn and grow? Not that I need to shame myself about it, but just how can I just say, what is it that I did to fail? Not that I'm a failure, but that I failed, right? So big distinction between um, the action and the personhood. So that's really good. Love that. What other thoughts? What, when you guys think about obstacles, you know, you've got time and we have limited time. And so what about taking too many things on, <laughs> right? That, that could be an obstacle, right? It's like, well, you just say yes, 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 and pile it all on. And then all of a sudden does it work? Uh, because, oh my gosh, I just took too many things on now. Oops, right? I've, I've done that way too many times, okay? So that can be an obstacle for sure. Uh, and so what are some other things that could possibly get in the way? Because this is really a big deal when you're trying to get to the thing. Most people won't do it is to say, well, what could get in the way and stop me from getting there? Well, maybe I don't have the resources, right? Um, so it's just what other things could be obstacles that could get in the way? Uh, the people around you potentially could be getting yeah. in your way feeding him <clears throat> the wrong ideas and things like that, uh, not motivating you correctly. That's huge, right? My dad used to always tell me, you will become the uh, five people you hang around with the most, right? So that, that was a real game changer for me. I'm like, oh, wow. Uh, and so, because you're going to be influenced no matter what by the people you hang out with. So, you know, choosing who you're hanging out with and spending time is either going to pull you back or accelerate you to where you want to go, right? That's a huge obstacle or an accelerator. You know, I have a couple, about three or four really close friends and I love them to death. And the reason why is because they're going to tell me the truth, right? When I say something and they go, eh, I don't think so. You know, I think you're wrong. And uh, that's why I love them, right? Because they're not willing to let me settle or be less than I'm supposed to be. So having good friends, it's probably one of the most important things. So looking at obstacles is a really big deal when you're trying to figure out how you're going to get there, right? Got to figure out that roadmap. How am I going to walk to this place and being able to get to that place? 
And then the other thing I would say, and especially for us, is to say, okay, what is the environment that we're in? Okay, because the environment also has a factor for us to determine how it is going to get to this end game. What are some of those things economically that we're up against right now that could get in the way for us right now? I mean, we're getting into an interest rate environment that's jumping up. Gas prices are going up right now. Supply chain issues. You know, all these things are taking place. You know, we've got a war going on. I mean, there's so many things that are flooding us that could be potential obstacles, right? So you have to take some time to think about uh, how you're going to get to where you are. So that's mission, okay? And then I had you guys go through, if some of you guys did this, is, is to interview a business person. Um, and, uh, you know, why do you think I had you interview somebody or why do you think I'm having you interview somebody? And what was it that I asked you to do? If anybody remembered or did it? Um, I was just thinking about like, I haven't gone through, you know, the same experiences that you've gone through. You've um, obviously are farther on a path of, you know, business and different things that I am on. So it's really beneficial to be able to find someone who has experienced those obstacles and knows about rejection and failure and be able to talk with them about it because they have those belief systems and, it, and it's powerful to talk with someone who's already been through that. So then when you do get to those points of wanting to turn back or give up or something, um, you, you know, like you've already decided kind of what we've been discussing is what are, what's your vision? What are your beliefs? So then when those times come and those obstacles are there, like, you know, how to make decisions and you've talked to, you know, like these people that have experienced that have been through this, um, can help us be able to refine these beliefs and envision at least like give us a better idea of what kind of obstacles we're going to be facing and how to get through them. 100% Macy you nailed it on the head. So you, it, you know one of the greatest things you can do is to find somebody you respect that is way farther down the road and then take them to lunch <laughs> right and become a excellent question asker. You know, if you become really good at asking questions and you become a wisdom seeker and you seek for wisdom and just look for it and thrive to grab that, that will save you so much headache and pain and detriment just by sitting down with somebody. I have a lot of older people in my life and I love sitting down with them because I always tell them at the end when I'm done extracting everything out of their mind is I always say, okay. Above all else, what's the number one and, and two things I should know that you would give me advice as you're towards the end of your life, right? And it's wonderful. And I just write that down and I implement it, right? I remember sitting down with a guy, uh, older guy, and he lost his wife. And I said, all right, above all else, what should I know? What do you, what do you want to tell me, right? And he looked at me and he said, take a video of your wife every week. He said, because I regret it. She died. I didn't have any videos. I wish I would have had it, right? So just those little things. I'm like, wow, I never would have thought of that, you know? So just little things that might be small or big, but it can help you really clarify um, where you want to go based upon somebody that's lived a life uh, for sure. So that is absolutely a great thing to do, Macy. What else? Why do you think I asked you guys to do that? I think a big thing you said uh, was to get us out of our comfort zone, yeah. um, for sure. But I found it really interesting. I interviewed someone I do have a lot of respect for and who is successful, but had nothing to do with kind of my path. But I found it very interesting because there's a, there's a broad, you know, a bunch of broad ideas that successful people take in. And it doesn't matter if you're specifically this or this. But uh, the advice he gave me, you know, set those goals, follow those goals. It, it doesn't like discriminate with what you're doing. It's for anything. And it's really just for everyday life too. Yeah, that's really, good. that's really, really good. I love that. That just to sit down with somebody in different industries, different areas and find out patterns uh, that people did. You know, they interviewed all the top CEOs of the publicly traded companies, try to figure out what is the number one same thing that they all do. 
And you want to know what it was? They all read close to 100 books a year. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> right? So, wow. you know, they're, they're uh, you know, so they were readers. <laughs> they were knowledge absorbers. They wanted to know things and they were hungry for wisdom and knowledge, right? So if you didn't do anything else, but become a reader, I always tell people here, I said, leaders are readers. So if you wanna be a leader, you better be a reader, right? Cause that's how you're gonna gain wisdom, gain knowledge, gain insight and clarify your own vision and wisdom. When I read, I read a lot of books. And what I always say is I said, I'm just trying to look for one thing that I can take away. I don't want 10, I don't want five. I'm just looking for one, right? And then I can implement it. And that's when things start to change. So it's good. I did ask you guys to do that. For those of you who didn't, I'd encourage you to, I'm gonna give you assignments for the next time too. I really encourage you get it done, get it done on time uh, because otherwise you're gonna be behind. Right. So make sure you do the stuff because it's helpful to you and you can really participate and you'll get the most out of the internship ultimately at the end of the day. Um, and then I had you guys do the final thing, which is your strategy, right? Assignment, you know, telling you to, to sort of what they thought about their strategy, right? How do people go through the process of doing what they do? So you're going to start to see a bit of a theme here of how much we really care about wisdom, knowledge, getting information, extracting it from people, right? So you can accelerate what it is that you want to do. Because um, you can try to go figure it out on your own, but there's um, crumbs that people leave uh, and you don't have to try to reinvent the wheel. Um, so if you want to go from zero to 60 or faster, then you'll start to do things that will get you there and you'll clarify and bypass go. Cause I had a lot of things that I wish I would have asked people a lot earlier, um, that would have saved me a lot of headache. Uh, if I would have just slowed down, reflect, connect with people and I, and I would say this, it's, it's kind of scary to sit down with people because what your knee jerk reaction is, is they don't have time for that, or I'm wasting their time, or, you know, they don't want to hear from me or whatever. But I could tell you guys right now, it is extremely rare that somebody like reaches out and says, hey, can I sit down with you and pick your brain? And I've got a question for you. And when it does, those people are extremely bright because they want to get information and knowledge and it's rare. So I would just say, if you want to be different and you want to go faster further, if you didn't do anything but that, it would be a game changer for you. So maybe that's something you guys can think about as well as you go through your own journey. So any questions or anything else before I give us sort of homework stuff for next time at all? Okay, good. So, um, and is, is everything on train you're working okay for you guys? Is it feel like it's, it's self-explanatory? Yes, for okay. sure. Good. So for the next time, um, what I want you guys to do is to go through core convictions, okay, which is how we make decisions here at our firm. Um, and I want you guys to share some of your convictions. Okay, that's assignment number kind of eight is what, and again, this is gonna kind of force you to think about this stuff. So it's, it's good uh, for you to go through this. Um, I'm gonna ask you to interview two of your friends, okay, about their probably core convictions. And um, maybe you'll learn something new that you didn't know before. Um, and then I'm gonna have you go through uh, our why, because we have a why here of why we exist, what is the purpose of why we're around, um, and watch the video. Have you go through the Simon Sinek video of his, how he speaks about why? Um, answer the questions from that, and then um, there'll be some, some sort of homework. Um, I'll have you go through Integrity Capital's DNA, um, what we kind of describe as our DNA, how, how we would describe ourselves to people. And then uh, have you do a little question assignment. And then finally, who thrives uh, at Integrity Capital? So what kind of people really thrive here 
uh, when all is said and done uh, for us. So that's what I'd like you guys to do between now and then. And, uh, and then feel free to just obviously reach out if you guys have questions or anything that we can be helpful to you guys as well. So before we go, um, what are you guys going to be doing for the weekend? Anything exciting? Oh, down the line. Will, what do you got planned for the weekend? I am going to the Eagle Rodeo. Uh, yeah, so nice. that should be a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, it'll, it'll be awesome to get out and experience that for sure. That is super cool. Are you going to jump on the, uh, the horse and sort of bounce around or are you just going to be a watcher? If they give me a chance to do it, I will not hesitate. But uh, I love it. I think I'll just be watching. Take a picture of that for all the rest of us. Like, yeah, like, no doubt. No, I would fall off very fast. So <laughs> that's awesome. What about you, EJ? What do you have planned for the weekend, friend? Um, in my valley right now, there's this uh, event or big event called the GoPro Games going on. Uh, it's like a big summer sporting event with uh, mountain biking and climbing and kayaking and rafting. Uh, so I'm just going to go watch. I have a few friends competing and climbing. So, and then they got concerts every night too. So I'll be doing that. Cool. That's awesome. Sounds fun. I love it. Yes, sir. What about you, Macy? What do you got planned? Um, my weekends are usually pretty similar, but I usually have a lot of homework I'm doing and then I try to squeeze some roller skating in there or ice skating. Yes. But, yeah. Fun. I just moved actually. So I'll probably be unpacking as well. So good old packing that usually goes on for a lot longer than I'd ever like <laughs> unpack. So roller skating, man, that's right. We talked about that. I yeah. <laughs> spoke at a roller skating conference. So I have a, a love for roller skating. So <laughs> Although you would never want to see me on them because I'd probably get injured. So. Evan, what about you? What do you have planned for the weekend? You know, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like every time summer comes around, uh, everybody's birthday just seems to pop up. Um, I've had so many birthdays this last week, and I've got this this weekend. That's so I'll be good. celebrating my friends. Well, that's good. Just tell them, say, hey, I'm not going to buy you something, buddy, but I'll be there. <laughs> I'm going to a nine-year-old's birthday party tonight. Ah, so nice. that's my kind of social scene right Exciting. now. Exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll give you little, uh, little gift baskets when you walk away. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. I love it. Kilana, what about you? What do you have planned with your six dogs? <laughs> um, they're actually back home right now. I'm in Vegas. I like just got here. That's why I was like a minute or two late. It's because our flight was a little bit late and then we couldn't get into the hotel room and so I like blasted in and walked in right at three so here I am now um but yeah we flew all day today and we're here for my uh, well it's my 21st my 21st was in January it's just easier to do traveling in the summer so we're here now <laughs> well happy happy birthday hope you have fun uh don't gamble all the money away <laughs> I'm not much of a gambler. I'm here for the shows. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, good. Well, uh, guys, uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend. And uh, we uh, look forward to connecting with you on Monday uh, at three o'clock, if I'm correct, Pacific Standard Time, if that is accurate. So we don't change in Arizona. We're the weird bunch. So so thank you. It was good to connect with you guys and I uh, look forward to seeing you on Monday. Thank right. you. See you Monday. Thank you so much. Take care. You guys on Monday. All right. Bye-bye.